welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Let's Talk Marriage. This is Pastor Larry coming to you this Wednesday afternoon with Let's Talk Marriage. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're going to get right on in our pro- into our program on today. I hope everyone is doing well. If you woke up this morning, you are doing well. All right, all right, all right. We can get right on into our program. Uh, what are we going to be talking about today is uh, we're going to be talking about communication. We're going to be talking about uh, the things that keep a marriage together. And first of all, uh, your marriage should be dedicated to God. It should be get it dedicated to each other as well as to God, because there's so many things that are going on in the world. Uh, There's so many things or avenues that are coming against marriage. Uh, This this doesn't seem to be the thing to do nowadays, but uh, we as married couples have to make sure that we keep the lines of communication open in a marriage, uh, because the uh, marriage is, is, uh, as we would say, is under attack. Uh, Because this is not the popular thing to do. Uh, People don't want to, you know, take that plunge into marriage. And uh, we've always said on the program, don't take it lightly. Uh, Don't just, you know, go out and marry someone just to be marrying them. And don't marry them uh, for the wrong reasons. And a lot of people uh, will get married for the wrong reason. Uh, you never should do anything for the wrong reason. Uh, a lasting, a strong lasting marriage is between two people and God. Just like, uh, for instance, if you take a cord in two cords and bind them together, it's stronger when you put the third cord in. And that's where uh, God would come in into your marriage. That's why we always say on the program, make sure that you're supporting each other. When you have that third cord in, into the marriage, the marriage becomes stronger with that bond, uh, through Christ. And, uh, we have to make sure that we keep Christ in our marriage. And a lot of times we kind of leave it out or you stop going to church for whatever reason. Uh, because it, this is another thing that's, uh, uh, doesn't seem to be popular nowadays. People don't go to church like they used to. Uh, and it was uh, times ago when you when their families went to church together, everyone in the household went to church together. And it was a, a day, a, a day that every, a beautiful day that you would go to a church and in the afternoon you would go see grandmother, you would go see grandpa. You know, you would, you would do things like that as a family. And the family is certainly uh, not popular today. So we want to make sure that we keep this up as Christians because it's not, you know, on on, uh, those that don't go to church is really not popular. But it's starting to drift over into the community of uh, Christians. A lot of them don't go to church uh, like they should. And they're, you know, confessing to be uh, Christians and they don't go as a family. You should go to church as a family, and uh, it it uh, causes it it it, it uh, generates stronger bonds within the family. It, it generates a stronger marriage when you attend church together and you keep Christ in as the center of your marriage. Uh, you should love your wife as Christ loved the church, uh, but we want to make sure that we are. A, attending church as a family uh husbands please don't let your wives uh, (laughs) go to church on their you know by themselves and uh we should be putting god as the center of our marriage and uh, as husbands we have to be the first partaker so we make sure that we are going to church as well uh if you don't have uh that many men in your church and that's the reason why you don't go you be the first one to go invite when you're uh one of your buddies that's you know has a family uh, has a wife and everything invite them out to church and then you'll be two men you know so uh don't let that be an excuse for us not uh going to church and not keeping god as the center of our marriages 
uh, because again, marriage is under attack because it's not the popular thing uh, to do. And when you end the marriage, make sure that you communicate. We've talked about that on the program many, many times about communication. Uh, it's not always easy to communicate. I, I will admit that about communication because I always say that marriage is not hard. We make it hard. But sometimes it is hard to communicate. Uh, but you have to find the right avenue to communicate, the right uh, opportunity to communicate. And again, we've said on the program many times, just because you have the truth or just because you're right does not always mean it's time for you to voice your opinion. Uh, you have to find the right. Uh, that's why uh, it, it comes in. That's where the church comes in. Uh, you learn these things as you attend church, uh, as you attend uh, teachings from your uh, pastor, from your leadership, uh, especially if you have a leadership that's uh, been married a while. Look at them. Look at the, at the examples that they set. And you, uh, that way you will be an example uh, to your family because your kids are, are we've said it many times on the program that your kids are watching you as a couple. And, and when, you, when they watch you as a couple, uh, the, the thing that they're going to look for in a relationship is the similarities of mother, or the similarities of uh, father uh, or dad. Uh, they're going to look for those similarities, especially if they're good qualities. Uh, you don't want to set an example of, you know, you arguing all the time. Then they're going to go because it, it, sometimes it becomes a chain reaction or it comes uh, hereditary or it comes uh, uh, as a thing to do. You know, uh, you first you were in a marriage that was abusive, then your daughter become uh, married or get with someone that's abusive. And the same thing goes uh, if you were in a relationship where you never get married, it, it tends to uh, follow you. Your children are in relationships that they never get married. So we want to make sure that uh, you are finding or you are with the right soul mate and uh, making God the center of your marriage. And uh, a sight, when, you, when you make God the center of your marriage, all the other things will come natural. For one, for uh, for instance, uh, keeping the romance in a marriage that will come natural because you're following the word of God and you're yielding to each other and you're respecting each other as uh, a married couple. Uh, th these are the things that uh, are accomplished when we uh, make uh, Christ the center of our marriage, and it 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 it, it seems to be a thing that oh, we don't want to go to church. We're not going this time or. Uh, you know, once we get wealthy, you know, because years ago when people didn't have anything, it seems like more people went to church. <laughs> and, you know, and even even with, uh, and I'll be the first to admit, there is such a thing as church hurt. But what you would do is uh, years ago when you went to a church, if you got hurt at a church and it was something that could not be fixed and you felt uncomfortable in that church, you would not stop going to church. You would just find another church. Uh, for instance, uh, like, for instance, if you went to McDonald's, if you went to McDonald's down the street from where you live at and the food was bad, the service was bad, you're not going to stop eating at McDonald's. You would just go to another McDonald's, even if you have to go way across town uh, to a McDonald's where the food is better, you would do that. And that's the same thing with a church. Uh, when you're in a church and there's church hurt, uh, you might leave that church, but you're not going to leave being a Christian. You're not going to stop being a Christian. You're not going to stop going to church. You might, even though that church is right in your neighborhood, you're going to go way across town to a church where you get the, uh, you know, and again, there's no perfect church, but you'll go across town where you uh, find a church where there is uh, less likely to uh, be church hurt in. And the same thing in a marriage. If you were once in a marriage that was abusive, you don't give up on it and say, oh, I'll never get married again. You you might have to go out of town to find your soulmate, or you might find your soulmate that's not a local person, you know. So you never give up on that. Uh, as long as we keep God as the center of our marriages, uh, 
we can certainly go a long ways in our marriages. Uh, when hard times come in our in your marriage, and uh, they will come in your marriage, uh, God is the strengthening agent that can protect you and keep you close. Pray together and ask God to be the center of your marriage, as we were talking about being the center of your marriage. Uh, and uh, when you have God as the center of your marriage, um, you pray together, ask God to uh, be the center of your marriage, reflect on where he's leading you both. Because you want to make sure you both are on the same page. That's why you should be attending church together as a married couple. Make sure you uh, don't, you know, let your wife go out to church and you're <laughs> still in the bed. Uh, you know, and make sure the children are going to because the uh, especially the male figures in the uh, household, if they see dads going to church, then they're going to want to go to church as well. And again, if there's no men in the church, and you feel uncomfortable because you're the only man there. Bring one of your buddies that has a wife. That's your perfect opportunity to invite someone out to your church. And uh, make sure that we are attending churches on Sunday. If you don't go any other day during the week, you know, because we know people are busy, people are working, people work late, kids have to get up and go to school. You know, you might not want to bring them out during the week. And uh, because kids get tired, too. You, you can't say, oh, you're young, you shouldn't be tired. You know, kids get tired, too. Uh, so make sure that, you know, if you don't go again, if you don't go any other day during the week make sure you attend on sunday with uh with let me repeat that with your spouse and make sure your children are right there and let them let be an example we there's just not that many role models as it is you know years ago uh there were plenty of role models you had all different types of role models models whether they were in sports or uh, in the political realm, we had so many uh, role models, uh, you know, and we had uh, ministers that were role models, and we had so many. But now, you know, nowadays, it's, you know, it's quite hard to find role models. But if you find someone that's uh, righteous, is on the up and up, and you can look to them as a guidance, make sure you do so. The same thing in a marriage, make sure that if you have that person that you can talk to uh, about your marriage, concerning your marriage, or and you know it's not going to go anywhere, make sure you uh, stay in contact with them and stay around people that are positive. That's another thing. Uh, stay around other couples that are uh, positive and make sure that we continue to keep God as the center of our marriage. And, and don't, by all means, don't take each other for granted it's so easy to take someone for granted when you're so used to them doing certain things just because you're used to them doing certain things does not mean that they have to do those things uh, you know you, you don't want to take them for granted make sure that you show appreciation in, in everything that you do and and appreciation between each other you know and, and when you can show appreciation between each other, you can appreciate God better because you can. How can you appreciate God and not appreciate uh, your spouse that's right there with you? And it's been through been with you through uh, thick and thin, thick and thin. <laughs> so make sure that we are uh, supporting each other and keeping God as the center of our marriages. Uh, we're going to be talking a little more on this subject and uh, upcoming uh, on our upcoming programs. We have a lot of other things planned and we're still looking uh, into uh, I'm going to be looking into uh, going possibly going live. Uh, but we uh, I got to find out what time should I be going live? Because if I do it at 12, a lot of people are still at work. Uh, so we're going to look into the time and uh, I'll get with my people <laughs> and uh, see what what we can work out on that. And uh, right now, I want to take the opportunity to invite you out to our services at New Zion Christian Center, where I'm the pastor, Pastor Larry, at uh, 
We're located at 1514 South Desplaine Street in Plainfield, Illinois. At the play, we're having services at the Plainfield Community Center. Uh, make sure you come out, bring a friend, and we don't hold you long. And, and enjoy, and we want to see you, your face in the place, and enjoy you in Christ. Uh, this is Pastor Larry. We're going to be signing off until we meet again with Let's Talk Marriage. Remember, make sure that you meet us at on service on Sunday at New Zion Christian Center. Make sure you bring a friend with you. And God bless you until we meet again.